So the TV adaptation of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson recently came out and I have some thoughts because I didn't really enjoy it. I'm in a complete state of shock. I forgot what I was going to say. I didn't really enjoy it. Um, let's chat about it. <laughs> So if you don't know, the Good Girls Guide to Murder series is very important to me. I love this series so much. Probably my favourite YA murder mystery series. Both the first and the last in the series are some of my favourite mystery books ever written. Well, the third's more of a thriller. But just some of my favourite books ever written. I absolutely adore this series. And I was going to the show probably with fairly low expectations that were fairly easy to meet. Not like negative expectations, but like, you know, I don't love adaptations a lot. I feel like adaptations often struggle. <laughs> <laughs> this one did. I prefer really not to, um, not to speak. If I speak, I am in, in big trouble. And so I was going into it, not expecting much, just wanting to be entertained, wanting to enjoy my favorite story in a different medium. Yeah, um, that didn't happen really. I didn't hate it, I'd probably give it a two star. I'd probably give it a two star if we're chatting ratings. But I decided to do a bit of a rant review on it. Um, I don't want to be mean, so if you're involved in this show, if you're one of the young actors, if you're Holly Jackson, if you're the writer, director, look away. This video is not for you. Do not watch this video please, because I will feel bad. <laughs> but I have split this video into a easily accessible list of bads versus goods, <laughs> which we're gonna get into. I do want to clarify, I did not reread this before watching this. I haven't read this since probably like 2020, 2021. I did not reread this before watching the show because often I think that can negatively impact adaptations because you're so focused on the comparisons between them. I do have a lot of comparisons still, but I think you're overly, concerned about changes they've made or whatever. So I didn't reread it. So I may, you know, there may be some issues with what I say about like what they changed and what was in the book. I might have forgotten some things, but shall we just get into it? I'm gonna try and not be spoilery for the book or the show. So you can watch this if you haven't consumed either of them. But um, yeah, let's just get into it. So if you don't know the vague plot of this book, if you've not read it, if you've not watched the show, the vague plot of this book is we've got a young girl called Pip who is investigating the disappearance and presumed murder of a school girl called Andy Bell, which happened many years ago at her school. And everyone believes that her boyfriend, the boyfriend of the missing girl killed her because he confessed and then killed himself. And Pip does not believe that's the case. So she's investigating it as part of her EPQ. And yeah, that's basically all you need to know. And she's investigating investigating it, interviewing people, trying to figure out what happened. Let's get into the bad and the goods. We have more bads and we're gonna start with the bad. <laughs> Number one, I do not like Emma Meyer's portrayal of Pip. <laughs> no, I don't wanna start with this one because it feels mean. It feels mean, you know, Emma Meyer is a young and up and coming actress. You know, I don't, I want her to do well, but she is the center of this story and I did not like her interpretation of Pip. I did not like, well, I don't know if it's of hers or the show's interpretation of Pip. I don't think it's a very strong portrayal. Firstly, the accent is whack. <laughs> the accent is so bad. Tottenham versus Arsenal. Tottenham versus Arsenal. 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 What, what is she doing? Emma Myers is American. Um, she's most well known for being in Wednesday. And uh, yeah, the accent is really bad. The, the accent is not good. The English accent is off-putting. And when she is your main character, who is in the pretty much every scene. I'm not sure if there's a scene without Pip in it. Yeah, I, I think the accent is bad and that's very distracting when you're trying to watch it. He was head boy, he was going to Cambridge. And he was always really nice to me. Sal was a good guy. It's particularly like, in like one of the first scenes, her American accent really comes out when she's yelling at these guys. And I just think if you're struggling with an accent, it's gonna affect the rest of your performance because you're constantly just, the main thing you're thinking about is how to keep up with the accent rather than some of the more nuanced, stylistic acting choices that you could make. And like, this is mean, I don't wanna be mean, but my two biggest problems with her was her accent and that she constantly looked like she was gonna cry or throw up. In scenes where like, yes, the, the character of Pip was uncomfortable but like as soon as she started talking, she was like, ah, blah, 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 blah. you know, talking normally, not talking as if she's gonna cry, but facially, she just looked like she was gonna cry all the time. And it was distracting. <laughs> They're the more two nitpicky things, but for the most part, I'm not sure she got good direction. I went and I was watching actually some clips. I've never seen Wednesday, but I was watching some clips of her on Wednesday and I was like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> she can act. <laughs> like, she was good from what I, the little clips that I saw in that show. She was a compelling character. She had great characterization and nuances to her characterization. Pip is just boring in this. She's boring. She's boring. I don't think, I don't think she got good direction on how to play Pip. So I'm not like saddling her with all the blame, but 
Pip just feels a little bit confused and I think the role has become a bit difficult to play because they've made these changes as we'll get into in a sec there's a lot of changes from the book in this and the changes that they've made to Pip don't feel entirely authentic to Pip's character or entirely authentic to her character at that point in her character arc. Pip goes on a very dramatic character arc throughout the series but they felt like more things book two or three Pip would do rather than book one Pip. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't think her line delivery was great. She was sometimes overact. My mum actually came in when I was watching the last episode into the room and she was like, Megan, what is this? And she was like laughing at some of Emma Meyer's <laughs> line delivery. We've been very, very arsh. Nice to meet you, Kelly. Kelly arsh. Which I feel bad about. This is, again, it's not me dunking on her, but it just feels at the same time underacted and then completely there's some line delivery that's complete overreaction. And again, this would not be a problem if the, if the cast was more level, but this is Pip's story. Pip is in every single scene. And there's just certain points where her line delivery makes you go, ugh, ugh. And again, this isn't entirely her fault because we'll get into the writing a little bit later in the video. But, you know, this is your big star. This is the name they got for this show, who they're probably paying the big bucks, <laughs> who is really the only super experienced uh, character on the young side of the cast. We have some older actors, which I'll talk about in a sec, but she is the only well-known, experienced young actor in this show and is obviously the center of the whole thing. And I just think it wasn't the best, but she can act. Like I've seen those clips of Wednesday and it was remarkably better <laughs> than whatever this was. So I just think some of the changes they've made, like I've said, it wasn't great. I'm sorry, Emma Myers, don't watch this. I don't know why she would be, but like, please don't. I just felt like it wasn't my pip. It was not my pip. <laughs> Now let's get into a good. A good. My first good is that the more experienced actors in this show were great. So I'd say you have three main older characters, three main adult characters in this book. We have Anna Maxwell Martin as Pip's mum, and she is amazing. I think some of the scenes, particularly later on in the series, the kind of broadening of their relationship versus the book, I think is really great. I think she was wonderful. I don't remember, I don't know what I've seen her in really, but she's a well-known English actress. And I just thought her portrayal of Pip's mum was wonderful. We also have Gary Beadle as Pip's stepdad. And I thought he had some really strong moments. There's a plot, which I don't remember being in the book, but it could have been added in. I feel like it was added in. I don't remember it being in the book, but there's a, there's a storyline with him that I feel like he really shines in. And then we have Matthew Bainton. We have Matthew Bainton, who is the love of my life. <laughs> I grew up watching Horrible Histories. If you're American, we had this show on the CBBC called Horrible Histories and Matthew Bainton was in it and it was my whole childhood and I love him. I love him, I love him, I love him. I thought he was good. I don't think he was quite amazing as I was expecting, but I think he was still very good. And like it was Matthew Bainton. So that was, a, that was a pro for me. The next bad is probably one of the most painful ones. Where is the mixed media, babes? Where is the mixed media? Where is it? Where, <laughs> if you've read this back, you know, one of the best things about this whole series is the mixed media. This is so painful to me. The show does an absolutely diabolical, terrible job of handling the unique nature of this book. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He loves hideous experience for me to go through how horrible and shit. I had to start with the Pip thing because that's kind of on its own. And now we're going to get into some, some, I mean, this is bigger. This is more egregious. This is more egregious. But I just feel like I had to explain the Pip thing before we get into this. <sighs> the mixed media in the show extends to Instagram. Instagram. We look at Instagram. We look at Instagram in every episode. We look at Instagram in every episode and we find something new out from Instagram. We find out where the calamity parties are from Instagram. We find out from, again, I'm not spoiling anything, but we find out like this person was here because of Instagram. We find out this person knew this person because of Instagram. It's all Instagram, which is the easiest option of any kind of mixed media corporation for any YA show. And the same thing happens in Heartstopper. They're just fucking texting on Instagram, looking on Instagram, messaging on Instagram, commenting on Instagram. Instagram. <laughs> The book series strength is its depth and breadth of mixed media. We have interviews, there's Fitbits in the latest series are incorporated, but in, in this one we have transcripts, journal entries, diagrams, police reports. I just... <laughs> yes, it is more difficult to show all of those in a TV show. Yes, it is, but it could have been done with some imagination. We could have had fun ways to incorporate the mixed media. Graphics, different, like when there's an interview, it's being told in a different way, like with a recording format and like, and then reimagine, it, it could have been done. It could have been done. It could have been done. It could have been done and it didn't. The show didn't want to veer off traditional storytelling. And what makes this book so unique is its uniqueness. <laughs> 
doesn't quite work. But what makes the book so special is it's unique. It's got that unique storytelling, right? It doesn't follow the normal format of the book. I mean, mostly it does format, follow the normal format of the book. But the production logs and the interviews and the diagrams and all of that is what makes this so interesting to read, in my opinion. And it just doesn't have it. The interviews is so egregious. I can't even explain to you how egregious the interviews is. Kim, what every sad, real oh, wow, it was bloody Kim. Oh. The interviews is the easiest thing. The easiest thing to incorporate. The easiest thing to incorporate. And she doesn't. <laughs> The interviews play a huge part in this book and they, they can be quite long. They can be like three, four pages of, of interviews. And in the show, she asks them, like all of them are like, you have three questions. <laughs> she has a couple questions and they tell her one important thing and then it's over and they walk away and like, you need to stop meddling in this. And it's just infuriating. It's in the interviews are the most, we're finding nothing out from the interviews. In the interviews in this, you find out so much character information and so much little clues that help you piece things together. The interviews are like, why are you doing this? I'm investigating. Can you tell me where you were on this night? I was here. Can you tell me something intriguing that moves the plot forward a little bit? This. Bye. That's <laughs> That's it. So for me, the, 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 the lack of the mixed media and the lack of the, the care taken to incorporate the mixed media in this is, is diabolical. It's diabolical. It's absolutely infuriating. It makes me so mad. It makes me so mad. I shouldn't get this angry. So um, yeah, this is probably the most egregious part of it for me and it affects later bads that we have, but it's just at the core of this book and they're just like, oh, better check Instagram. Look what I found on Instagram. Look what I found on this person's Instagram. Look what I, I logged on to this other person's Instagram. So I found a private Instagram. Look what I found on that one. When will I, when will I live a happy life? Because it's not right now. <laughs> The next good, you can tell I'm starting to scrape the barrel already for the goods. The location setting, the locations they've chosen for the, the show, the location sourcing, the scouting of it, brilliant. Brilliant, I think it looks great. I think it looks great. I think Pip's house, the village, everyone's different houses, the school, I think it all looks wonderful. Whoever did the location sourcing of this, it makes me think of that meme where like, after someone does something iconic, they go, someone tweets, get your deal done out and you've done well. Has anyone ever seen those? It's, it's like a recurring joke. Anyways, um, get your deal done out and you've done well. <laughs> it all felt very cohesive. Like I can imagine that there's probably parts of this that are filmed here and parts of this are filmed here, like all over the UK, but most of it's probably filmed in the same village. But what I'm saying is it all felt very cohesive. It all felt very realistic. It all felt as one. I felt like visually, it was a very strong adaptation. It was a very strong adaptation of the UK version that they weren't shying away from making it UK, right? Which I was afraid they would do because it is set in America in the US version. And it felt very quaint, very English. And I loved, I loved all the settings of the houses, everything, everything about it. I thought they did the setting the locations were great. That's a good. <laughs> the bad the relationships and the characters some of the some of the more niche characters of this the show focuses a lot more on the interpersonal relationships than the mystery that is what the show's focused on the show is not really focused on the mystery it's just focused on pip's friend group pip's relationship with rabbi which yes Ra i said rabbi did i, I meant to say rabbi but i'm talking too quickly <laughs> Yes, these do play an important role in this, but it is, it is, the mystery is the mystery. You get what I mean? <laughs> I didn't think the actors in the friend group were bad. I think some of them had really strong moments, particularly Kara and Lauren, the girlies. They had some strong moments. Pip's relationship with Kara is very interesting, but they, you can tell they're inexperienced. None of them have been in a lot and it just feels a little bit like this is their first role. And that's what, I mean, listen, I am, I want new and up and coming actors to, to you know, be successful because at the moment we're just having the same actors the, say, the highest paid actor, this is a this is an unrelated topic because none of these are going to become the highest paid actors ever. But all of our highest paid actors, like the same people they were 20 years ago, like we haven't got enough up and coming uh, talent. And I think it's important, but I do think, you know, you can feel it. You can feel it in this. I thought the actress who played Nat De Silva was really, really strong. Like when she appeared, uh, it was another one of those moments where I was like, oh my God, <laughs> I'm, I'm watching acting. I'm watching acting. I'm watching someone act. Oh my God. Like the line reading, I believed it. I believed, I believed in the character. I was like, you are Nat De Silva, which I didn't feel like that with the other characters. And because the show is so plot driven, you know, the book is so plot driven, the show has to be plot driven because of the mystery. But the show is also trying to focus on the character relationships, you end up with like these paper thin character development, but a lot of 
screen time of them. So often what happens is Pitbull, like an event will happen, right? And then Pitbull sit down with Kara and tell her about it. And then sit down with Ravi and tell her about it. And then be sit down with the parents and tell them about it. Like it's, it's way too much just conversations between people and nothing moving the plot forward. And I liked the Ravi actor. I liked the actor who played Ravi, but there was no chemistry between Pip and Ravi, which is absolutely diabolical. If you know how the last book ends, the fact that I could not care less about his I was like, minus spoilers, I'm gonna put spoilers up on the screen while I'm talking about this. There's a, there's a bit where Ravi looks like he's gonna move away at the end, right? And he comes back. I think he could have just gone. Like, I think, just go. You know, it's not working out. <laughs> Not feeling the chemistry. So yeah, I think the relationships didn't feel super strong. And I think the the minor cast of characters, the young the young cast of characters, you know, they, they were good, but they weren't great. And I didn't always believe in them as, as characters. My next good is the show is actually quite strong when it focuses on the murder mystery. <laughs> when I was taking notes, all of the scenes, I'm like, okay, this scene is pretty good. This scene is pretty good. It's the scenes where we're like, we're tense, we're in it. It's like, feels like the book and my heart is pounding, pressure's on, let's go. That's when the, the show actually works, right? When the mystery is at the forefront and it's not just two characters sitting talking about, oh, how do you feel about this? <laughs> how do you feel about this? Right, that, the, it works. The show is good in those moments. When it puts the mystery at the forefront, it is strong. You know, when we have, when the scene has deep implications for the mystery and we're finding things out, it works, it works, but those moments were not as not as uh, frequent as I would have wanted them to, let's just say that. You can tell that my goods are much more brief than my bads. My next bad, the writing ain't great. The writing ain't great. I've come to the conclusion, it's really hard to write YA for TV shows. It's much harder than for books. Books is pretty easy, right? Because you're reading it in your head, you're like, you're assigning the tone, you're assigning the jokiness of stuff. But when you're like seeing characters play that out, on TV, it feels cringe. I'm so sorry, it feels cringe. Sorry. <laughs> At least say it like you mean it. The, the friendship scenes in this feel a little bit cringe and feel a little bit forced. Same way I feel, I kind of feel this way about Hearts to Pie. I know this is a bit of a problematic view, but as time has gone on, I felt like the writing in Heartstop was a bit cringe. I've only watched the first season of Heartstopper. I've not watched the rest. It's my favorite graphic novel series. I don't really like adaptations. And I feel like, <laughs> I just felt the writing in this was not good. The writing was not how real people speak. Again, my mum walked into a room and laughed. She was like, what are these people saying? <laughs> what is going on? It just didn't feel like how real people talk. And I feel like there were moments when you could see those younger actors trying to make it work, like trying to be authentic. And they almost got there. That particularly Cara and Lauren, they were good, right? They were trying, you could still almost see them like trying to like, how do I negotiate this? <laughs> how do I how do I say this line in a way that feels realistic? And um, yeah, I just didn't feel like the writing was very strong at all. And it's so, did I talk about this later? We can talk about it now, but I made some notes. I made like two pages of notes on this. It's so drawn out. Let's talk about this now because this does actually come under writing. It's six episodes, doesn't need to be that long. Needs to be four, needs to be four. There is so much guff we can cut out. It is slow. It is slowly paced. My mom was like, she sat there for maybe 20 minutes. She was like, Jesus God, they're dragging on, aren't they? I was like, yes. <laughs> like, finally, someone understands I've been going through watching six episodes of this. Boring, shut it. Conversations should take the time, there's pauses. And it was, uh, the writing is, is not good. It really could have been condensed into four episodes. And then you have much, well, it feels like you have more of those moments that where the mystery is at the center, even though you don't, but you just cut a lot of the guff out. It was just, it was too long, too long. My next good, this might actually be our last good. This is our last good. The soundtrack's great. The soundtrack's great. Whoever, again, the, the location sourcer and the soundtrack decider, these are not their, I mean, that's probably not their professional names, but I don't know. We're great, we're great. We had the last dinner party, Wet Leg, Billie Eilish. It all set this like edgy, tense, but also young and modern and naive. And like, it had the perfect, perfect vibe for the show. Honestly, you guys, I feel like I have the best taste in music. Like, I think it's very hard to beat me in taste in music. Like it set a great feeling to all the scenes, a great tempo to the book. Each each uh, episode opened with a different song, actually, over the title sequence. And I thought those worked really well. It kind of set the tone of the episode. The soundtrack for this was amazing. The soundtrack was great. That's our last good. My biggest bad, my last bad, really, and this ties to the Mixed Media one, it is an unfaithful adaptation. It is an unfaithful adaptation. Because they got rid of the Mixed Media, 
they had to change a lot of scenes because Pip has to find things out in different ways. And I just don't, I don't think it worked. You know, the entire, the structure of this book is entirely different. I mean, I have not reread this in a long time, but I, there was not many scenes that I was like, oh yeah, I remember that sequence of events leading up to that. Like everything was a little bit changed and sometimes reasoning so things were changed when I don't think they needed to be. They also felt like, I was watching it, I was like, you are changing things to make things look more visually interesting. Because in the book, we are really in Pip's head. She is interviewing people. She is writing stuff up in her production log. She's sitting in her bedroom thinking about things. Whereas that's not necessarily interesting for a show I get it so they were like mm, let's make a posh dinner party scene let's make a tennis scene it was like what can we make that's visually interesting but it just felt it felt so transparent it felt so see-through as the motivation for doing that and you know there were too many episodes like I said and all the episodes have the same the same structure where about they're 40 minutes long and at the 25 minute mark something happens that makes Pip think okay she needs to stop the investigation she needs to stop I'm gonna stop hi Ravi I know you're brother is like you know <laughs> accused of murdering his girlfriend and like a lot hinges on this for you but I'm gonna tell you every episode I'm stopping I'm stopping investigating sorry I can't do it anymore I can't do it my heart is saying no she sulks around for a bit I'm like oh, oh oh wish I could do it and then she decides to carry on and it, the, the issue is they are adapting a book that has one arc right yes books could have mini arcs in them but for the most part you see that traditional arc of a book, right? They are making six episodes and each episode needs to have an arc contained in it, right? And like, like a book does, but you're making six of those and it just gets really repetitive. They needed to get more imaginative about this kind of thing. And often it felt like, okay, this is something we can't change. Like it's a reveal, it's a character's motivation for doing something. So this happened in the book, this happened in the book, but it felt like, so now we have to explain why and we have to do it. Versus it feeling like a natural progression of the story. It was like, this happened, so I guess we gotta do that. I guess that's gotta be the resolution. Oh, you know, and this is why, guys, ego, <laughs> ego. I don't know. It just felt like a very unfaithful adaptation to the book. And really, my conclusion is, at its core, the feeling is different. How many things can you change from a book and it still have the same feeling? That is the most important thing, I think, in an adaptation. Like, I don't think show adaptations should be entirely faithful to the book because you need to change things for the screen like I get that they needed to make things more visually interesting I don't get the mixed media because you could have done it well you know that's, that's a conversation for another day you you have to change things but you have to keep the core feeling of the story and at the end of the day this show did not make me feel like how this book did it has a completely different vibe it has a completely different emotions brought up by it. It didn't feel the same. The show should still feel, you can change as much as you want, but if it still feels the same, then it's okay. This didn't feel the same. I mentioned this earlier, but the way things are revealed in the book is entirely different to the show because she's not finding things out in interviews or not finding things out in journals or like in the stuff that she does in the book. And that she has to do these like kind of big escapades almost for the show that help her find out things that don't necessarily feel like Pip yet. She does go on to do things like this in book two and three. It's not entirely out of the realm of possibility, but it doesn't feel like her and it feels transparent in why that's happening. Shrink it to four episodes, find a more exciting way to incorporate mixed media. Bob's your uncle, like you should be okay at that point. I think it has a really slow start. The start doesn't hook you. If you are watching this, having no idea what the story is, I don't know if the, the opening is even very clear or engaging. The first four episodes, are a slow. I think episode five is really strong. Episode five is the best episode. And then episode six, whimper goes out with a bit of a whimper because of the stuff they've changed with how the ending happens. They've tried to make it a bigger, more dramatic ending. And I feel like it just feels a bit like, oh, it's a bit cringe. <laughs> so that's my feelings on this show. There were, you know, positive moments. There were moments where Emma Myers was great. There were moments where those, that cast was great, but the overwhelming feeling of it wasn't that. And um, yeah, I'm sad. I'm sad about it. This is why I don't watch adaptations because they always let me down. <laughs> because all they're gonna do is disappoint me. You know, I also don't know how the budget for this worked because my mom's like, oh, it's shit because it's BBC, isn't it? And they have no budget. But it is internationally being distributed by Netflix. So I just wonder, you know, how much was BBC budget? How was Netflix budget? I don't know. But yeah, I don't know if I'll even watch a second series of this if it does get greenlit for a second series. Like, I didn't like Shadow and Bone, really, when I watched Shadow and Bone. Heartstop is probably one of the nicer adaptations I've watched, but I still haven't watched any more of a series. I've never watched Daisy Jones and the Six, which I think I would enjoy. But adaptations are not really for me. Adaptations are not really for me, and I find them cringe. I found Shadow and Bone cringe. 
Hence why it's, I'm not surprised it's been discontinued. Sorry for all the fans out there who are sad about that. I don't know. I don't, I can't see this getting a second season. I can't see it getting a second season. I don't think it's good enough. So there we have it, everyone. That is my thoughts on A Good Girl's Guide to Murder Adaptation. Um, it's been out in the UK for quite a while, but I know it comes out in the US today when this video is going out. So some of you will have seen it, some of you won't. But let me know your thoughts if you come back to this video after you've watched it, if you're in the US or international. Uh, if you're in the UK, let me know what you thought of it. But I didn't love it. I didn't love it and I'm sorry to have made this video, but I, I wanted to make this video excited. I want it to be an exciting review. I need to be happy. I scheduled this because I was like, oh my god, it's going to be so fun to talk about this adaptation. It's not. It's not. The bin men are outside. They're taking the trash out with them. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, Holly Jackson. And we're done. So thank you for watching this video and I'll see you very soon in another one. Bye.